Do you want to help save humanity and make a ton of money in the process? Then stay tuned because today I'm going to show you how you can become a space billionaire and a hero of humanity at the same time. Christmas is fast approaching, and if you don't know what to wish for, then consider checking out today's sponsor, Rich Wallet. Rich Wallets are small, compact wallets that can hold up to 12 cards. If you want to carry coins or keys, get their optional cavity tray. All their wallets are made from premium materials like aluminium, carbon fiber, and they all come with RFID blocking to prevent digital theft. So check out rich.com forward slash D2EA and use offer code D2EA to get 10% off. Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to show you how you can save people out of the Thargoid infested areas and make a huge amount of money in the process. But before we go and save anybody, we need the right equipment and we're going to need a ship. And the king, the best ship for this is the Python. Since a lot of the stations we're going to be going to is going to be smaller medium pads only. So the best ship for this is definitely, in my mind, the Python. Hard point wise, super easy. No hard points needed, we're just ferrying passages, we are going to be running from every fight that we encounter. I should say that I built this build with minimum engineering in mind, so you can do a lot of upgrades to this that I haven't done, but it's just to show that you can do this with very, very little engineering. For the uh, utility mounts, I have two heatsink launchers, um, just because I want some extra ammo, we ha I could put in a third if I wanted to. Again, you can near these for extra ammo if you want to. I put down a shutdown field neutralizer, even though the Thargoids interdicting and hyperdicting don't usually use the shutdown field, you can be really unlucky to encounter a interceptor that's going to fire it off while you are approaching or while running away from the station. And for that reason alone, I have fitted it so that we have it in case of that emergency since while we are going to be shielded and we are going to have some hit points it's not going to be enough to take sustained fire for the corn turtles again i kept it really minimum power plant i could make do with a 5a and again i left it unengineered the thrusters is one of the things that i have engineered and i really think it's mandatory that you do engineer because we need speed the speed is what's going to keep us alive when we get hyperdicted when we get interdicted we're going to use speed to get out of there 500 meters or plus when we're boosting is what we need and therefore the 6A thrusters with dirty drive and drag drives is needed for us to just get out of dodge and get away from any trouble. And you can see here I fitted a pre-engineered frameshift drive. That was what I had lying around. You don't need to use a pre-engineered one. You can just take a normal one and engineer it if you want to. Um, and if you engineer it, of course, you need to have increased range and mass manager on it. The build I have here has a total range with full cabins of 250 light years on a fuel tank. And the furthest you should go from, uh, as far as I've seen so far, the furthest I've been from a, from a rescue ship has been 200 light years, meaning that we can get from this, uh, the station we're rescuing from to the rescue ship without uh, running a fuel scoop. And that upgrade um, uh, increased range and mass managers what's going to allow you to do so. The rest is just pretty standard. Let's get light here. I've gone with a 4D life support, a, f a 6D sensors to get the ship as light. Again, haven't engineered it. You could engineer these two with lightweight if you wanted to, to get more range out of it. Power distributor, I just went with a 6D. Again, I went for some uh, some lighter ones and I just took the biggest one um, that I could, or the lightest one actually, that allowed me to still boost because of course we need to be able to boost so we can, can run away from the Thargoids. For the internals, this is where it gets a little bit more fun. We only need economy cabins. All the passengers are fine with economy cabins. They would rather sit in an economy cabin than a rescue vessel than being in a station attacked by Thargoids. So, economy cabins all round. I did fit a, uh, a Guardian frameshift drive booster for that extra range. And I also fitted the smallest shield that we could, which was a 3A um, shield generator. Um, you could. I didn't have a prismatic. If you have a prismatic lying around, put that in there. It gives you more hit points. I didn't have a 3A, a size 3 prismatic lying around, so I just put it in a normal one. Again, I kept it unengineered. You could put um, a reinforced high capacitor thing on it for get more hit points, stuff like that. Um, there is no size 1 economy, uh, no cabins at all actually that's size 1. So I had this extra slot that I didn't really know what to use for. So that's why I put in a Guardian shield reinforcement pack just to give us a bit more shields. Because again, we do have the power budget to do so. And you can see we even actually under spec the power plant. And that's the build. It's very straightforward, super easy to build. And it does this job beautifully. So once you got your ship in order, you need to find the right location to go and do your missions from. And depending on your priorities, your target selection here is going to be slightly different. What you're going to be looking for is going to be systems that is under 
currently you have under Thargoid attack. Basically, you won't find a system where there is a small or a light space-based starport that is currently under attack. You can do this land-based, but again, it takes longer to go down to the surfaces, so I prefer these space-based ones. If you are looking to primarily help with the war effort, what you're going to be looking for is looking for a system where progress has already begun. You can go to AXI's Discord server or whatever, or figure out, actually we're mirroring that channel, the target calling channel on the community Discord server now, so you can also go to our Discord server, discorddj.com, as we're mirroring their target calling there. But basically, if you want to help with the war effort um, towards saving humanity, you need to find a system like this one where there is some progress, because that's the one that is um, that's going to be worked on. If you go for a system that's not being worked on, all the process you do towards that system is going to be reset at the end of the week and basically have no effect. The system that's currently being worked in may not be the ones that has the highest money payout per passenger. Um, for those, it, it you need to often go a little bit further away because the main driver for payouts is the distance you go. Now, the payout difference is not super huge. I mean, if you go for a system that's relatively close to these rescue ships where we're going to be transferring passengers to, you're going to get like 145,000 credits. If you go for those further away, that's like 190 to 200 light years away, you're going to get 175. So the difference between the two is only like 30,000 credits per passenger. And given that you have a shorter distance from the one closer, the realistic like payout per hour is difference between going close or far is small. So you can't really pick any system you like, but if you are trying to optimize for money, you need to get as much distance between you and the mega ship or the rescue ship that they're going to. Just be aware that it's not always the systems furthest away that gives the highest payout. You can see that I'm in one system right here, and we do have a rescue ship sitting right here, only 110 light years away. But all the missions in the system actually goes down to this ship here, which is 200 light years away. As far as I know, the only way to tell which rescue ship they're gonna go to is to go to a system, dock up at a station and look at the missions. I've spotted that the missions always go to a rescue ship for the same faction, so if it's an independent system, they go to a rescue ship in an independent system. Federation goes to Federation, Empire goes to Empire, but they do not always go to the closest ship to their faction, so... Now, as you're heading into your selected system, there's a very good chance that you're going to get hyperdicted. And as I said, we're building this, we're going to use speed to get away. So just point away from the Thargoid, use your radar to see where it is, and just boost, 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 keep boosting. If you get attacked, you fire off a heat sink, as that also helps you kind of uh, get away from the Thargoids. They can't hit you as easily when you're running cold. Pretty much the same deal as you're super cruising in system towards the station. Here, you will also be very likely to be interdicted by Thargoids, and we're gonna apply the exact same tactic. Boost and heat sinks is your friend. Just boost away from them. When you do get interdicted, I recommend actually just submitting. So pull the throttle back to zero, let the interdiction submit. That means you get a shorter cooldown so you can get on your way faster, and we save some time doing that because, to be honest, those interdictions are extremely difficult to avoid. So I just usually submit and run away. When we arrive at a station, you will be likely to get under fire. We're going to do the same thing. Be fast, be cold, and remember your landing gear. So once you arrive at your desired spaceport where you're going to be running missions from, you need to pick missions. And again, you have some choices to make here. One thing that I've tested and noticed is that compared to other types of missions, the payout doesn't change compared to rank. With all other types of missions in the game, I think, the higher your rank is with the faction offering the mission, um, or your reputation with them, I should say. The higher the reputation with that faction is, the more they're gonna pay you. That's not the case here. I try to ally with the factions, they pay the same. So it doesn't matter if you are if you are neutral with them or whether you are allied, they pay the same. That also means you can pick from any faction in the system um, and they will contribute. And as I said, since the payout per passenger is the same, it doesn't matter if you take an 80 passenger mission or you take a 10 passenger mission. The only thing that matters is that you get that ship as full as possible. You want to try to avoid running with empty cabins. Now, if you're looking for materials, for instance, you can go up here and click materials and you can see there's some really nice ones. Exquisite focus crystals, there's modified embedded firmware, um, biotech conductors are really nice as well. They're often, you know, these are only offered by missions. So there's a lot of really good materials that you can gain from this. 
And if you're looking for money, as I said, it doesn't matter which missions you take. If you're looking for materials, you want to take the missions that offers the material you have for the fewest number of passages. Because you can see here, if I was looking for exquisite focus crystals, here I get five for 80 passages, but up here I get five for 27. So in this case, I could carry like three of these missions with 27 in the same cabins as I could with the other one. Um, and, and I would get f three times as many exquisite focus crystals for the same run. So depending whether you're looking for materials, for money, just take whatever that fills up your cabins. For materials, take as few passages as possible per mission. Same thing if you're maybe looking to get some rank increase. Um, if you're trying to rank up with one of the factions, because you can see here that if you go for reputation, some of them will have these five tip, uh, pips of reputation. Same deal here. If you're looking for rep, you would much rather go with a mission that gives you five pips for 21 passengers than five pips for 72. So again, often I would just say go for the missions with the smallest that gives you the materials that you want. Once all your passengers has been loaded on board, just find the appropriate mega ship or rescue ship that uh, they want to go to. Should be a mission marker above it. And set your destination. And now we're ready to leave. Now, just as when we arrived, we're not going to worry about anything around us here. We're just going to go in, uh, go out in this case, boost as fast as we can. If we get attacked, we're going to fire some heat sinks. But basically, we're just going to get out of this as quickly as possible. We're not here to fight. We are here to save people. We're being attacked, but it's only by scouts, so I'm not too worried about it. We are outside the mass lock, so we're just gonna keep on boosting, keep on flying away from those scouts, and then get out of here. Once at the rescue ship, it's pretty straightforward. We just go and hand in the missions, and again, if I were to pick all the reward, like the, the credit options, this run would have yielded me 21 million. I can potentially do anywhere between three and four um, runs of this, depending on how many times I get interdicted. Um, I can probably do like three or four runs here. So as you can see, we're looking at anywhere between 60 to a little over 80 millions per hour, um, which is pretty good going, given that you're also helping towards the war effort. But in my case, I'm actually here for engineering materials, so I'm gonna kick, uh, pick up some biotech conductors for, uh, for this mission. Now the final thing you need to do before you're ready to go out and make a ton of space box and save humanity is to go and subscribe to this channel. I'm already working on my next money-making guide that should be quite profitable if everything turns out as I hope. But we'll have to subscribe to get that later. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, I will see you guys in space.